on. So, um, thanks a lot for joining us today. So today we'll discuss the value of low intensity arc training. So what does it mean for an athlete and especially for a woman? What is the value out of it? And we have Dr. Stacy Sims, PhD, Bevan McKinnon, uh, professional coach, Dr. Sahana Gopal, PhD as well, and myself, Hélène Guillaume, founder and CEO of Wild AI. Um, if you want to have a very quick uh, one, two, two, two lines intro, uh, each of you, uh, Stacy, Bevan, and Sahana, who are you? I, I'm a professional triathlon coach, and I work with elite uh, professional athletes, male and female, and amateur age group athletes. Been doing this for about 15 odd years, and I have a particular interest in coaching female athletes uh, to ensure that we can get maximum health and performance. So it's one of the reasons that I'm excited to be working with Wild AI. Very excited to work with you as well. Stacey, who are you? Who am I? I am a um, female performance physiologist, um, which means I look at exercise and training, uh, nutrition, and the sex differences in them. I've built an academic career over the past 20 years, really getting into it and understanding it, and now trying to push it out into the big wide world. Um, and Wild AI is a great platform for that surrounded by other experts and disseminating the information and it's it's great very excited to have you too and Hannah, who are you uh i am a, <laughs> a strength and conditioning coach uh and i work with british diving uh but i also work on the scientific content um behind wild ai so i Basically, try like like Stacy said, um, try to get as much information out there as possible, which is scientifically vetted, um, and that's it's it's been great working with a bunch of experts um, and spreading the knowledge that we don't know. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, today we're discussing this topic, which is low intensity training, and the reason is that it's something that is often not extremely well understood by athletes, and uh, if we look at endurance sports in particular the majority of the time actually it is spent on like on the Arabic energy system which will go into what it means um, so here what we're looking at especially in this time where a lot of people have switched their training into something that is more uh, build or maintain rather than really looking at high peak performance because of the COVID situation um, how can we really see that as a, something that is valuable and the key idea here is that we can actually get better results but uh, by getting uh, by focusing on this low intensity training and so here we'll discuss how can we use this type of training included in a program within wild ai and um, is there a time in the muscle cycle of women that we can capitalize this form of training um, so sahana what is uh, low intensity training and what is this thing called maximal aerobic function how do you calculate it and why, why do we see it as uh, something useful? Right, so um, essentially to get better at aerobic training, uh, we should be training the aerobic energy system specifically. Um, and given that exercise is so heavily influenced by uh, the duration, but then also the intensity, um, and that affects the energy system being used, um, what uh, we need to know is the heart rate at which we're working at. Uh, so that heart rate would then define which energy system we're predominantly using. Um, and in the aerobic events, um, uh, that is a slightly lower heart rate. Um, and that's when we use the aerobic system maximally. So um, that's going to be, uh, in a sense, we use a formula to calculate at what point the aerobic system is maximally used. Uh, that's going to be 180 minus uh, your age. Uh, and this was a formula developed by a coach called uh, Phil Mathetone, who is also behind the success of Mark Allen. Um, so if you think of it, about it as a concept, it could be really useful uh, that if you were fitter uh, aerobically, then you would be able to sustain a strong pace at then a lower heart rate uh, in a long distance event. Uh, and in those long distance events, uh, you are essentially spending uh, two hours or maybe longer, um, and 90% of that energy comes from the aerobic energy system, uh, which is why it's really important that we train that system specifically for endurance sport. 
Amazing, thank you. And uh, Bevan, how can we progressively use um, this and the, and together with the heart rate and how can we work around that? And how can we also uh, determine pro progress if uh, the session of the intensity is relatively low? So how, as an athlete, like how do I still understand that I'm progressing? And can you share um, like anything on like how you trained uh, women on that and an anecdote and how you work on that? Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's one of the, the biggest misconceptions in endurance sport that the only thing that makes you faster is the sessions where you go fast or the sessions with high intensity. Um, and quite frankly, they're the icing on the aerobic cake. Um, they, they, they do add some speed, but the speed is truly defined by your efficiencies that are built through low intensity training. And if I Whenever I've had this discussion with athletes, with uh, professionals or age group athletes, it doesn't really matter. And the best way that I can describe uh, why you get faster with low intensity training or why it ha helps you establish a very strong foundation to which you can then apply higher intensity training um, if you're completely unfit and I asked you to go out for your first ever uh, jog and I said to you, I want you to stay under your maximum aerobic function heart rate. Let's say, for example, it's 140 beats per minute. The first time you go out, um, maybe you can't even jog before your heart rate gets up to 140 beats per minute. So you go out for a power walk um, and you do that three times a week and you still keep your, your heart rate at that particular level or below. The following week, once you've built some fitness, you might go out and find that, oh, I do a bit of power walking, but now I can actually jog a little bit, but I'm still not letting my heart rate go about above 140 beats per minute. Now, if you keep extrapolating that out, week after week of training at that intensity, we might go from the first week only being able to power walk, but by weeks three, four, five, six, and seven, we might be apt to running continuously the entire time. Now, if you keep taking that out even further and further, once we're up to running continuously, but not by lifting the intensity, we, if we continue to train consistently, then the pace that we're running at may continue or will continue to improve. Um, so you can do that in blocks of training and find that yes, speed is improving, by building your aerobic energy system. Um, it doesn't happen on a workout by workout basis. You need to look at it at, over a longer time course, but speed is built by improving at these lower intensity levels. And the way that we do that is we train consistently, we train within that intensity range, and we create some understanding around what that intensity range is for us as an individual. Um, and that's where people's first uh, uh, effect on their potential actually occurs by the volume of training that they are able to achieve at low intensities. And once they see a plateau in performance through that type of training, that's when they can start to explore some high intensity stuff to just to change the variety and the stresses on the system. But for those people that see no value in it, um, I hope that they understand from my explanation that there's a lot of value in it. Um, it's, it's actually the biggest piece of the, of the pie. And the way that we do it is we train consistently and we train within those intensity ranges. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, and, and yeah, as you say, like it's, it's, it's nice to know that uh, in these times where uh, like our, our trainings are completely turned around and all objectives as well, that we can still really uh, work towards building really the, the right foundations. Um, yeah. And uh, Stacey, in particular, how can female athletes incorporate uh, this alongside the menstrual cycle? So what does it mean when we should focus on that? And how does it sync with uh, the female athlete physiology? So, I mean, <clears throat> I'll start with just the basic idea of, of sex differences and the fact that women already have a greater amount of uh, a protein required for beta oxidation or your aerobic capacity. And a lot of women don't understand that. So they'll look at a male training program and they'll be like, oh, I have three days or two days of high intensity. And they get completely blown out of the water. And it's because they haven't been able to um, really harness that, that sex difference of really being able to pull in and use that aerobic capacity by 
working within the muscle fiber itself. So if you're building your aerobic conditioning, as Bevan was explaining, you're tapping into your natural physiology of really boosting aerobic capacity, becoming, quote, metabolically efficient, being able to go at a faster speed um, for, you know, less, less workload, so to speak. But when we're looking at it from a menstrual cycle angle, we know that um, in the low hormone phase, you can access carbohydrate pretty readily. And this is where women want to go high intensity where they're like, yeah, I can hit it hard. I'm going to use my carbohydrate. I'm going to recover well. And it's hard to hold people back. Um, but this is where someone like Bevan comes into play and is like, no, we know you're in the low hormone phase. You can hit intensities, but let's pull you back so that we're still able to um, build this whole aerobic capacity. And then as you get into ovulation and the luteal phase where your body can't access carbohydrate very well, but is really um, prime to use free fatty acids during exercise. This is where we move into that steady state. And this is where you can really garner some benefits for that aerobic capacity. Um, so in, as Ben was explaining, you're blocking it in and getting better along the way. And if you work with your physiology and look at the sex differences in the muscle fiber from an enzymatic activity profile and being able to really maximize mitochondrial development because you're a woman. And then also looking at how estrogen affects fueling and knowing that estrogen allows you to use more free fatty acids and less carbohydrate and use that to your advantage and build this huge aerobic base. And so uh, is there a specific time where it's particularly good for women that is like really building even more the foundation that uh, to, to focus on the, um, on the low intensity training? On the yeah, in the, in the high hormone phase. So ovulation to all the way through the end to right before your period starts, yeah. because this is where your physiology is at its, prime for using fatty acids and a lot of oxygen to build that aerobic capacity. Thank you. And um, how do you see uh, well AI, how can it help improving um, women uh, understand that and function with it? Um, the basic idea of women understanding their menstrual cycle and how hormones affect every system of their body, especially the fueling platform. One of the biggest things we see, especially in today's society with all the high intensity interval training and the CrossFits and the spin classes and the boot camps is that women are going at that high intensity way too often. They're not recovering. Um, and the downside of that is they put on a lot of belly fat or more body fat because they're not adapting. They're not recovering. They're in this breakdown state all the time. And then the answer to that for most people is I'm going to eat less and I'm going to train harder. <laughs> but in fact, they get into this roundabout circle where they're like, I'm going to eat less, train harder, eat less, train harder, because they're not seeing the gains. So if you're understanding your cycle and understanding where you are in your cycle, then you can alter your training to know when you could probably hit it hard, but when you really need to dial it back. So you don't get into this vicious cycle of working against your physiology, not recovering, not adapting, and just in this downward spiral that I see so prevalent in so many of the athletes I work with. Well, not after I start working with them, but <laughs> when they first come to me. <laughs> Before, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's uh, why to, all together we're building all the AI, which is bringing this knowledge to a nap to for helping women on a daily basis um, understand yeah. what they should be doing. So. Um, great. Well, thank you so much. Anything else you, anyone wants to add? Good luck and train safe in these times. Yeah, exactly. And don't stress. There is no reason to like put your body through a high end training stress because everything around us is stressful. Yeah. So this is a time to do the low intensity, take care of yourself, listen to your body, good, good food, get good sleep. And yeah, just try to get through it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great time to work on our womanhood, understand really the body and what it wants and, uh, and fuel it properly. Yeah, I yeah. think it's a perfect time to scale back, uh, understand what you really need to do, uh, do some reading, um, kind of identify things you need to work on, like the little things that you never get time for and crack on. Like reading yeah. roar. 
<laughs> you haven't yet. <laughs> okay, Taking mean, a course, an online course, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, perfect. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, all our members, athletes out there, coaches, we're sending you love and strength. All right.